Hey, so you're probably looking over the internet for some way to make a sort of retro sounding synth like those lovely lush pads of the 80s and you always come across the Roland Juno 106 now. It is a very expensive machine and a very lovely one at that but not everyone can get access to that. But I do have my Minilog XD so I thought I'd use this one as a way to patch this one up so it sounds similar and see what sort of sounds we can get. So let's get into it. So let's go through the Juno itself and then see what we can apply. So first off the LFO we can control with this pretty much direct correlation. Um, with the DCO we have our VCO groups so we can create our sub we can create our pulse width modulated square and we can create our saw wave. We've also got our mixer where we have a little bit more control than the Juno. Um, the filter we can muck around with went through the EG and LFO and then have some different bits there. Um, we have our amplifier that's controlled through this envelope and then we have this envelope as well to control some other features. And then lastly we can add the chorus effect through the effects group on the mini log. Something about the mean log is we have could have a sneaky way to add a delay to our LFO which I'll show a bit later in the clip. So the first thing I like to do is to create an initialized patch now with the mini log and monologue and all that I just work backwards from the start because that puts me into all the free integers so let's get to a free patch area. Next I want to focus on the oscillator itself so first off we're going to create a sub base just by doing that. Second, we're going to create our square wave, which we're going to pulse modulate. Now we do need to do a bit of menu loading for this one. So we can go to edit. We'll go into, I believe it's the fourth button. Yep. We want to say target oscillator for the LFO and we want to change that to VCO2. And we'll talk a bit why we do that a bit later. And then lastly, we want to have a saw wave. So we'll just use the digital oscillator to create the saw. Now, if we play that, and then we get our mixer to play everything. So we don't have a high pass filter on this one, but we do have the low pass filter. So we can use that. Plus we have an extra drive to muck around with, but I'm just going to set it so it's tracking the keyboard and we'll set it low so we can drive it with an envelope. So with the filter, I would like to just leave that open for now because we're gonna muck around with the envelopes for a second. So first envelope, I'm gonna make a bit of a pad sound. So probably 10 o'clock for attack. So it's got a bit of a rise. We're gonna let it delay off a bit. Probably one o'clock for the sustain so it drops down and then give it a bit of release so we let the key off, it's gonna keep going. For the second envelope, we're probably going to use this to drive the cutoff. So I'm going to drop the cutoff right down, flick the switch so it's on cutoff, and then we'll give it a good amount of control and we'll have the attack start straight away and then give it a long delay. Next we're going to set up the pulse width modulation. So we're going to set that to shape, which is going to be controlling what we set up on the first or the second oscillator. And then we can give it some amount, put on triangle, have it on normal. Now we're almost there. Last part is we're going to add some chorus to this. Now we set it to mod, we turn on the effect, and then we'll cycle through until we hit chorus. So how these two work is you've got time, which is how fast the effect happens, and then depth is how much is applied. So So we do have a basic patch set up. The other part to this is that the Juno did have six voices where we only have four. But if we're trying to play like we have our nice seven chord. 
If we're trying to play like nine chords and that, we can break them up so we can add those extra parts in. Cool. So that's the basic patch. Now the mean log has a plethora of different options to muck around with. So let's give a different try on how we can muck around with this. So that sneaky trick which I wanted to go over was how to create the delay for the LFO. Now you do need the version 2 update of the firmware so go ahead and get that download and install on your machine and then what we're going to be doing is using key triggering which was a feature of the monologue and we're using that to create a motion track that we can use as a delay. So let's start setting that up. So we've gone to motion, we're going to hit record and play. So it goes through, and then what I'm going to make sure it's in record. And then when it starts over the thing, I'm going to start ramping it up. And then bring it back down, because it's not going to be an envelope, and I'll stop at the end, it will keep cycling through. Um, I'll stop that, and then I'll just clean up some of these motion records. So we'll want the start to be at the very bottom. And then what we can do there is now that's linked up to the motion record, we can go back, holding shift, hit play. So now play is flashing and that means motion recording is on. So when we hold down a key, it will step through that sequence, which is adding our delay. So I hope that's given you a bit of food for thought with how you can use this machine to make those retro sounds. Now, I really do enjoy this box. so. I'll leave a link in the comments below with the patches that I set up so you can have a play with it and don't feel that you just have to use them. Take them, see what you can create and muck around as much as you can. 
I'm more than happy to have a listen to what you build. Also, if you have any more questions about this machine, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. I'll come around and answer them the best I can as well. Now, I'm really enjoying building these tutorials and I hope they've given you a bit of information as well. So yeah, we'll see what next week's bring and I'll see you next time.